safety. Uh, we are standing here today uh, where there was recently a bank robbery. There were four robberies in just a nine day period here on Staten Island and there were other additional ones in other boroughs. Uh, shootings continue to soar in our city and we have record number of, uh, of, um, of other events and I'd like to go through some of these stats with you. 97% increase in shootings in 2020. In 2020, there was also a 44% increase in murders. There was also a 42% increase in burglaries and a 67% increase in car thefts. Now, that's from 2020 up from 2019. And if you look at this year, we're already seeing other increases in crime compared to the same time period in last year. So in the month ending in May 16th, that 28 day period, uh, which is the latest information available on NYPD Comstat, we see that murder is up again this year. Uh, in that 28 day period compared to last year, we see a 67% increase in murder, 25% increase in rape, 54% increase in robbery, 22% increase in felony assaults, 28% uh, increase in misdemeanor assaults, 41% increase in grand larceny, and a 50% increase in car thefts. Uh, as I mentioned, rape was up 25% compared to the same month prior uh, last year, and in other sex crimes, it's an increase of 79%. And as we all know, in our community and across our city, there has been a recent uptick in hate crimes, which is the largest increase of all the crime categories, 229% increase over that 28 day uh, period compared to 2020. Um, we've been warning the mayor, our colleagues in the city council and in the state assembly who supported radical policies that we would become less safe as a result. And these numbers reflect that. And we are tired of the experimentation believe that we now need to proceed and make fixes and roll back some of these policies that have made us less safe. First and foremost, the radical bail reform law that was implemented in the state legislature, I was a member of the state legislature at the time, uh, and I voted against that bill. Uh, we fought very hard after exposing uh, that this, all the number of crimes that were going to be occurring, and make, even the media was on our side, uh, even some of those newspapers that actually called for the bail reform said that the Albany policy went too far. We fought back for seven months. We were able to get them to add back onto the list in which a judge can use discretion to set bail. Uh, we were able to get them to add, uh, we were able to get them to add manslaughter, homicide, felony drug charges among among the crimes. However, there are still a number of crimes that we are seeing repeated offenses. And that includes robberies, which I we mentioned we're at a site where there was a bank robbery just last week. Uh, burglaries, criminal possession and sale of firearms. When we talk about the rise in shootings and illegal guns, uh, that is something that needs to be added once again to the list in which a judge can use discretion. So we're asking our colleagues in Albany uh, who supported this policy and Governor Cuomo to look at this and make additional changes or better yet repeal the law altogether. Unfortunately, when you read about these crimes and you read the criminal history, you see extensive histories for these individuals. Okay, it's not a first time offender or a second time offender in many cases. In some cases, they have a dozen prior arrests, two dozen. I've seen it dozen prior arrests who was released without bail. The second thing is we think it's important that these individuals who are convicted actually complete their sentences. The governor's parole board has a history of releasing cop killers, murderers, rapists, and other dangerous individuals back onto our streets. You talk to the NYPD, they will tell you making sure these individuals complete their sentences is one of the top things that can help public safety. Next, we want to see the NYPD plain clothes unit restored. It's, I mean, just look at what happened once the mayor eliminated the NYPD plain clothes unit 
uh, which was a key in taking uh, illegal, drug, illegal drugs and guns off our streets. Shootings skyrocketed as soon as that occurred. So we believe that it's critically important that the city reverse course on this, restore the NYPD budget in its entirety. As you know, uh, radical members of the city council and the mayor cut the budget one-sixth, one billion dollars. We, we believe that that money should be restored and we need our elected officials to have the back of our NYPD officers uh, and that means giving them the tools and resources and the support that they need to do their job. One of the other big mistakes was revealing or taking away qualified immunity for our, our NYPD officers uh, which we're going to see less proactive policing because these officers now are going to be personally liable even if they are following the NYPD guidelines the, the set by the department even if it's not a uh, violation of someone's constitutional right uh, you should know that that qualified immunity was already stripped if they weren't following the guidebook and if they did violate someone's rights so this is something that's completely different and unfair to our police officers um, we need to have proactive policing and as you know because of these actions taken by our mayor and the city council we have seen NYPD retirements soar, 75% increase, 5,300 uniformed officers retired in 2020. So this is what we are calling for. Um, I want to give my colleagues a moment to also say what they would like about this issue. Um, but I will repeat my uh, calls from earlier this month, that if the mayor and the city council, if the governor and the state legislature are not going to take action to keep our citizens safe, they're going to continue to abdicate their responsibility to public safety, then I believe that the feds need to send in the Department of Justice, the FBI, the DEA, our drug enforcement, and the ATF to get illegal firearms uh, and prosecute them on the federal level. It's something that they do now, but certainly their focus should be uh, making sure that they strengthen their focus in these areas. If in the world and we have to support them and what the city council our colleagues have done with the budget with qualified immunity what they've done the state with bail, bad bail reform laws has done the opposite we need to support our greatest police department in the world we stood in front of the police department a week ago saying that we need to hire more cops we need to refund the police department we need to stop this ridiculous notion of defunding the NYPD they need our support. They need to be able to go out there and do their job and keep our community safe. Yesterday, midday, I think the Post put out an article that said there was 30 shootings already over the weekend. 30 shootings. We have people who don't feel safe in the subway. We cannot safely reopen our great city if we're not safe. We talk about reopening. We all want to reopen. We all wanted to reopen months ago. But we have to be safe if you expect the city to come back. If you expect tourism to come back. People need to feel safe in the subway. People need to feel safe walking around. We have bail reform laws that are just extremely, extremely bad laws that have a revolving door. Someone gets arrested, they perform a hate crime on a Jewish person, they're out the next day and they're bragging that they would do it again. We have hate crimes on the rise. We have to have better bail reform. We have to repeal bail reform. We have to get rid of the qualified, the, the bill that, that got rid of qualified immunity. We have to refund our police department. We have to hire more police officers. Five years ago in the city council, we actually hired more police officers. And then our colleagues last year in the budget went against that vote when they actually voted to hire more police officers. We need to change the culture when it comes to public safety. We need to have the backs of our great women and men of the NYPD. And to do that, we have to make sure that these bad laws are repealed, that we start refunding. Joe and I called for the anti-crime unit to be reinstated a week after they, they decided to, to take it away. Our colleagues all here, 
stand in solidarity. Public safety is paramount. It's paramount on Staten Island, it's paramount in our city. We have to make sure that our city is safe. We can't have constant robberies, hate crimes, burglaries, shootings, with no repercussions. We have to take our city and our borough back. We have to make sure that we support the NYPD. And we're here together to say that we're going to continue to push to do that. So I want to thank Nicole and my colleagues for being here. Again, public safety is paramount. That's what matters right now. Make sure that we take our city back. Make sure that we have a safe reopening, that we can move forward together with a safe city. Thank you. Councilman Joe Borelli. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. I was told not to touch this, I'm sorry. Uh, it's impossible to separate the issue of rising crime from the politics that brought us here. N none of these policies that have resulted in the shooting uh, and murder statistics that Nicole cited earlier are the result of, of, of a leaf off the policy tree in front of Gracie Mansion. They're not something that fell out of the sky. Instead, they, they were marched into this state capitol, they were marched into City Hall by a bunch of Oompa Loompas all singing the same song. Defund the police, no justice, no peace, all that stuff. And these people are called progressive Democrats. And voters have one opportunity. Sadly, the Democratic primary and Republican primary will be the deciding factor of most of the elections that happen in New York City. And voters have one chance to reject people whether they be Democrats or Republicans, who stand for the progressive values that led to this rise in crime. These are all things that were done by progressive Democrats. Bail reform, ending the anti-crime team, eliminating qualified immunity, criminalizing police actions. Again, these were things actually advocated by progressive Democrats, who at least had the decency to tell us what they were doing. Shame on some of the other Democrats who were just too scared of people like AOC, too scared of the woke social justice warriors that are in their districts. Shame on them. But unless we make a change of the people we elect, again, elect Democrats, elect Republicans, just elect people who have a rational view of what's going on in terms of criminal justice. But until we change the culture of who we're sending as our government representatives, we're still going to have rising crime. You don't believe me? Think back just a few years ago. You, you don't have to change the flux capacitor on your DeLorean and to go back that far to remember a city with a vibrant business community, a surging housing market, and the safest streets the Big Apple has ever known. That was just two years ago. I mean, literally two years ago. January of 2020, bail reform led its act it, 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 into effect. That's just 18 months ago. And over 18 months, we've seen a wave to fund bail reform, qualified immunity, ending anti-crime team. I mean, my God, we had these units called anti-crime units that were some of the toughest men and women in New York City. Right? They understand, just like you do, that it's only 1% of people, even in the toughest neighborhoods, who are committing all these crimes. And these people actually went out there and they tried to get guns out of the hands of really bad people. In a bygone era, these men and women would be getting beers bought for them at the local watering hole. Instead, we villainized them. We said they're the ones causing violence in our communities. This is a sick and twisted view. And again, if you don't eliminate people from representing us in government who have these beliefs, then I, I, unfortunately, none of us can help you going forward. You have to make sure people like that don't get elected to office. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. Uh, thank you to my colleagues here standing, taking a stand. You know, we heard a lot already about what has created this environment. You know, being one of the few elected officials in New York State and in New York City who actually wore the uniform of police officer, I actually worked in the anti-crime unit as a police officer, as a sergeant, and as a lieutenant. Just to give you some, I don't want to bore you with numbers, just look at 2019 as a comparison when it comes to gun crimes in New York City. The anti-crime team was a major factor in taking guns off the street. Why? Because they had a jump on the bad guy. Because they were in plain clothes in an unmarked vehicle. Taking them away, we see the results. 30 
shot across the city. This so, in 2019, there were 3,600 gun arrests. 3,100 guns recovered. 1,900 of those by members of the anti-crime unit across New York City. That's 1,900 less shootings. 1,900 less hospital visits. 1,900 less funerals that our New Yorkers have lost loved ones. Think about that. So the next time you hear someone say defund the police, what they're really funding is our loved ones' funerals. So it's time for us to take New York City back, to stand up to the insanity coming out of Albany, coming out of City Hall. So let's stand together and let's take New York back. so much, Congresswoman. You know, I, I spent eight years prosecuting uh, violent crimes, dealing with the worst of the worst, uh, and working hand in hand with the New York City Police Department to keep our streets safe. And about two years ago, when the state legislature started talking about bail reform, first they were talking about misdemeanors, then they were talking about nonviolent felonies, and then eventually violent felonies were put on the list. And I saw the writing on the wall. I knew that a blanket law like this would increase, would lead to an increase in crime. So that's why I decided to do something about it and decided to run for state assembly. You cannot have a blanket law like this that takes away a judge's power to make a decision. That's why we elect judges to begin with. Everything in the criminal justice system is a case by case basis. There are never two defendants that are alike. No two victims are alike. No two facts are alike. There is nothing exactly the same with any two types of cases. That's why you have a judge. That's why you have a prosecutor. That's why you have a defense attorney. That is the reason why a blanket law like this is so dangerous. They passed it. Fast forward to the city council. They then moved to defund the New York City Police Department. They take away the one unit that we used to work so closely with the DA's office to keep the streets safe. The people that are actually going out there attempting to prevent crime, taking guns, taking drugs off the street, and they dismantled them. One billion dollars in cuts, not to mention overtime for these police officers that, are, that would have them spend time on the street preventing crime. And then fast forward two years, and then we're trying to figure out why there's an increase in violence. Why there's 30 shootings in one weekend. Why are quality of life crimes up? It's not a secret. The actions led by the Democratic-led assembly and this radical progressive movement that has overtaken the assembly and overtaken the city council has directly led to these increase in crimes. And enough is enough. We have to fight against this. We have to get our quality of life back before there are more victims. Thank you very much.
learning how your representatives stand on these particular issues. Making sure you, you, you know, if you don't support defunding the police and your city council person voted to defund the police, then you shouldn't vote for them again, quite frankly. And that is something that we have tried to make an effort uh, to, to get the public to access to those voting records, make sure we expose it on the campaign trail, and uh, just do our due diligence in letting people know. So I would say that it seems to me that the, the tide in public opinion is turning, uh, and hopefully uh, when we have a new mayor uh, come in January, we will see some of these changes. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.